Welcome to Art Starts Explores. I'm Kay, and I work at Art Starts as a gallery coordinator and preparator. I started the Art Starts program three years ago, and I'm excited to bring a version online that can be enjoyed by families across the province. Let's explore circles together. A circle is a common shape, but have you ever stopped to think about how to describe a circle to someone else? You've probably drawn one before, and you can probably find and point one out to another person. But if you had to describe a circle, how would you do it? This month at Art Starts, we're going to think about circles and use them in our art making in a bunch of different ways. If you've never joined us for Explorers in the past, I want to take a quick moment to tell you about the three rules or guidelines we like to follow. First is respect. We practice respect for ourselves by listening to how we feel, respect for others by listening and sharing, respect for the land by acknowledging the nations and indigenous people who have served and continue to serve as guardians and stewards of the land, and by doing our best to be respectful guests as we learn and play here. Second is no expectations. Try not to plan too much before trying something today. If we get a picture in our heads about how something should turn out, we can be disappointed with ourselves when it doesn't. Try practicing surprise and always ask yourself, I wonder what will happen if I... Third is that nothing is for keeps. In the gallery in Vancouver, we like to say, take nothing home with you except your experience. But since many of you are at home now, we challenge you to unmake everything you try today. This means after you finish trying something, try to disassemble or take it apart so you can use it again for something else. Try not to make any completed thing and whenever possible, Pull from your recycling bin to practice, and if it can still be recycled when you're done, put it back. Trying something new doesn't need to make something for keeps, and that's just what we're practicing today. Let's start by trying to define a circle with words. Take a look at this circle, or think about a circle you've seen before. What are some of the things you notice? If you want, make a list of some of the things you notice. With all the things you noticed, could you try describing a circle to someone else without showing them a circle? If you can, great. But if you can't, don't be discouraged. It can be really difficult to describe something that people commonly know or use. Circles are everywhere, and so it's easy to use an example of a thing to describe it rather than needing to find new words. And pointing and comparing things is a great way to communicate without needing verbal communication or spoken words, or without needing to share a common language. If I asked you to draw a circle, you could probably do it without any tools besides a pencil and a piece of paper. But in mathematics, a circle is defined as a shape where all points along a plane, or this line, are the same distance from the center point. You can tell a circle is perfect if you can measure the same distance from the center out to any point on the outside. And that's really hard to do without a tool. Try it. How close can you get to a perfect circle? Let's try making a perfect circle together with some tools we can make ourselves. For this activity, let's get a piece of paper, any size, and remember you can always get something out of the recycling bin, a piece of string or floss. Don't have string or floss? 
That's okay. Another piece of paper will also work. If you found some string or floss, grab some tape. If you're using another piece of paper, you don't need any tape. A ruler and two pencils. You can use a pencil crayon too if you want. All ready? Okay, let's take one of the pieces of paper and pick a point as close to the middle as you can. If you want to be sure it's the middle, we could fold the paper in half and then half again. This makes an X shape on the paper. Where the X crosses, mark your paper. That's the center. I'm going to show you a way to make a circle using a piece of string and some tape and a way to make a circle with another piece of paper and two pencils. For the paper, I'm going to cut it down a little thinner so it acts like another piece of string. The first thing we need to do is make a measurement. Let's measure 5 centimeters on a piece of paper. I will mark the 0 and the 5 centimeter points. If you're using string or floss, mark the zero by making a knot on one end and then marking five centimeters with your pencil. Next, we're going to fasten or secure our paper and string to the other paper. We're going to line up the zero mark or knot where you marked the center of the page and then tape it down. First, pierce the tape with the pencil. Be careful or ask a guardian or older friend or family member to help you. And then thread your string. It should stop at the knot. If it slides through, you can always go back and double knot your zero centimeter point so that it doesn't slide through. Tape your knot to the center of the X. Now take your second pencil and tie it to the other end of the string. Try to line the pencil up to the other mark you made, but if you go over or under, that's okay. Now, make a circle. For the paper, we're going to pierce our measurements with our two pencils. When you're ready, line up one of your pencils at the X mark of the first piece of paper. Then hold it steady and trace your circle. What did you notice? Did you find it difficult to make a circle like this? What happens when you hold your pencil in a different way? Did your paper rip? Did you go slow or fast? You can move your tape and string to another piece of paper and try again. You can also take your two pencils to another page and try again. Try making circles using different pressures, by holding your hands in different ways, by choosing different measurements, and by going at different speeds. What happens? What do you notice? Did your circle turn out? Or is it a little shaky in places? Use your ruler. Did it work? Did you make a perfect circle? Making perfect circles takes practice, even when we're using tools and tricks like this, or even when we're using a tool called a compass. A compass is a mechanical tool that helps us make a perfect circle.
What makes this circle perfect, and this one not perfect? Is one circle better than the other? When we're making art and practicing, that's up to you. But if you think about circles in real life, like the wheels of a car or a ball, a mathematically perfect circle allows us to use them as reliable tools. Have you ever tried to roll a football? Or have you ever tried to ride your bicycle with a flat tire? What if your bike had triangle or square wheels? Would it ride the same? What do you think? Be sure to download our resource one pager this week for additional questions you can ask each other, another activity, and some words you can use to challenge yourself when you're playing with circles. And don't forget, when you're all done playing and exploring, try to take things apart and put them away again so that the only thing left behind are the pictures in your brain. Thank you for watching this video today. If you're watching this in September 2020, We'll be hosting a live art making session on circles for the next three Saturdays at 11 a.m. where you can make it home alongside me and ask questions. Be online at facebook.com slash artstarts around 11 in the morning and you'll see our workshop stream go live. We save our videos after as well, so you can check out one of our past workshops anytime. We'll have a live online performance on Facebook Live by one of the performing and touring artists in the Art Starts directory. There's always something free to see, do, and play along with on Saturdays at 11 a.m. on Facebook with Art Starts in Schools. All families, young learners, guardians, friends, and creative folks are welcome to join us online. I hope to see you then.